Hi, awesome that you're here. So basically this channel is about machine learning, data engineering and DevOps, because chances are that at some point you would also like to deploy your super awesome machine learning model to production to serve the greater good or something like that. In this video, we will focus on the getting things to production side of things and how to do it properly. The easiest way to deploy something into production is to use cloud providers like AWS or Google Cloud Platform. They offer an easy to use web interface where you can basically just click your application together and they usually provide a super awesome documentation about how to do it. And here I am telling you that this is not a good idea and to never use that thing. So let me explain. Hi, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Johannes Frey, but you can simply call me Joe and I've been working as a software engineer for over 15 years now. And I'm here to share what I've picked up along the way. So it would be super awesome if you could go completely insane on the like button and leave a comment down below. So let's talk about why you should never use the web interface. In my opinion, the main goal that you should have when deploying your service and setting up your infrastructure is reproducibility. You need to be able to reason what is running on your infrastructure at any given time and be able to revert to any moment in the past. And this is where IAC enters the stage. IAC is an acronym and stands for Infrastructure as Code. It basically means that you are not using a web interface or some manual process to provision your services and set up the infrastructure, but instead you do it programmatically in one way or another. And even though I specifically mentioned cloud providers, since this is the area where I have the most experience in, the same principles apply when hosting your own virtual servers or installing all the needed software yourself. You might just have to use different tools. Speaking of tools, there are many various tools to do the job. And if you are interested in going into more detail on some of the tools, please tell me down in the comments. But how do those tools actually work, you might ask? Well, I will tell you. Most, if not all of those infrastructure as code tools work in a way where they store a state file in your cloud provider storage service. And whenever you execute the tool, it generates a state representation of the code that you provided before actually making changes to, the, to your cloud infrastructure. It then basically makes a diff of the stored state in the cloud with the state that would be the outcome when the tool executes your code. If there are no changes, nothing will happen. If there are changes, then only the differences will be applied to your cloud provider. Infrastructure as code tools fall generally into two categories declarative and imperative tools. The difference between those two approaches or kind of tools is that with the declarative tool, you tell the tool what the final state should look like, for example, by providing a YAML configuration file that lists all the different services that should be used and their configuration. Like for example, I need to have a AWS Lambda function that executes that specific code and is running in this subnet, something like that. Two examples for declarative tools would be Terraform, which uses its own kind of markup language to specify the configurations, and AWS CloudFormation, which uses YAML. On the imperative side of things, there are tools that give you some more power. But as some wise man once said, with great power comes great responsibility. Those tools are basically libraries for your favorite programming language that enable you to create your infrastructure. With those tools, you have the possibility to, to use all the features of the programming language, create more complex component classes, and so on. This approach is called imperative because you don't just state the desired outcome, but you actually imperatively tell the tool via code what to do. Two examples of imperative tools would be AWS CDK and Pulumi, which both have bindings to various different programming languages so you can just pick the one that you're most familiar with. And even though the learning curve might seem steeper when using infrastructure as code tools, they offer the big benefit of reproducibility. So what do I mean by that? Let's imagine a scenario where you and your buddy would like to build the next super awesome AI service. And both of you happily start creating resources in your cloud provider's account. At some point, none of the two of you would know what is already created and what the actual current state of your cloud infrastructure yeah, looks like. And now imagine that somewhere along the way a bug or error happened and your service is done. And now you need to see what happened in the last few days. And again, this is a painful process. 
On the other hand, if you have uh, your infrastructure deployed using one of the mentioned tools and optimally have the code uh, responsible for creating your infrastructure checked in in some kind of version control like Git, you are suddenly able to search the commits for the changes that have been made in the last few days and you know instantly yeah, what changes uh, could possibly cause debug or error. Also, you are easily able to go back to a working state by checking out the last working state from version control and applying it to your cloud account using the chosen tool. It almost is like having snapshots for your whole system's infrastructure. I would say for every serious project, this should be the way to go and this will save you lots of gray hair. And even though I have some, it's not that much and it would be certainly more if I wouldn't use the tools. Another added benefit when using infrastructure as code is that you are able to easily integrate it into your CI CD process. I don't want to go too deep here. If you are interested in videos about CI CD, please let me know down in the comments. A nice way to integrate it would be so that, for example, the infrastructure as code code gets executed whenever you push your commits to GitHub. This way you have a perfect reproducibility because there are no more manual steps involved and everything is fully automated. I would like to close the video with one case where I allow myself an exception from everything that I said so far. Sometimes when playing around and just quickly trying something out, I actually do use the web interface. But this is only for temporal things that I delete right after I'm done trying things out. If it is persistent infrastructure, that is infrastructure that is here to stay and to be actually used by some service, this infrastructure needs to be built using infrastructure as code, even if it's just a bucket to store some files. I hope I could show you why, in my opinion, infrastructure as code is very important. And that's it for today's video. I hope you liked it. If so, going completely nuts on the like button would be super awesome if you like my content. That would tell YouTube that you like my content and help to reach out uh, to more people. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.